Hey, what's up guys? It's Mark Yoon and today I'm bringing another hopefully exciting video. So what I got for you today is actually a request from my buddy Matt Bennett. Um, he's a subscriber on this channel for a long time, long time follower, and uh, he wanted to know, as you can see on the screen, my uh, top 10 favorite characters in Soul Calibur. Now, I'm not sure if I've covered this topic before. I went through my list of like recent videos from the past year and I didn't see it. So if I covered this um, already, this would be an updated version of this list. Uh, but for those of you who are interested, a uh, like would always be appreciated. And let me know your favorite characters in the comment section down below. So let's start with number 10. My 10th favorite character, this is encompassing the entire series. So the side games are included, bonus characters are included, um, as well as, well, as well, <laughs> as well as um, Soul Edge, uh, which would be the first iteration of the game, or Soul Blade, uh, as it was referred to in the States. So the first character on this list would be number 10 is Night Terror. Night Terror was in Soul Calibur 3. He was the, the bonus villain, I guess you would say, for the, the story mode where you had to do a bunch of specific tasks just to get to him. He was really hard to even get to. And then getting to him was, I don't even want to say half the battle because he was a really hard boss, but I just like the character design of it. I think he's uh, a bit cooler than the traditional nightmare, which is basically Siegfried with like a crazy arm and like using a nightmare sword. So this version in particular is just it just piqued my curiosity, my interest a little bit more than the originals. Um, so there you have it. Number ten is Night Terror. Number nine is Zaslamel. Uh, Zaslamel always piqued my curiosity from the aspect of his immortality, like especially in, uh, again, Soul Calibur 3, when you see his time-traveling escapades in his arcade ending, I believe there should have been of that in Soul Calibur 4 as well, and um, it was just really cool to see that kind of interpretation of a character in a game that's pretty much stayed in the same century um, for most of its life, outside of 4, and it's... Soul, uh, Star Wars stuff, but which was a little strange. But um, besides that, like he's one of the only like characters that stays through things like the entire time because even Soul Edge is passed around and stuff like that, as well as Soul Calibur itself. But it's a Solomon, um he has a cool character design. I like the white cloths. Um, the hooded figure thing is always kind of cool. He's got uh, a scythe, which makes him um, really menacing and imposing, uh, I don't know, there's just a lot of cool things about the character that I enjoy, his moveset's very fluid and cool, which I've always liked since he's been in the game, and, um, that's why number nine for me is Zaslamel. Number eight is Cervantes. Cervantes is one of my original mains, um, I, it's not, I like the combination of his long dagger and his, like, short dagger, the way that he uh, does the tornado attacks or like flies towards an enemy or you can go up in the air and fly downwards. Um, his short range bursts from the, the gun portion of his uh, shorter blade. I just really like the character as a whole. Even his backstory was kind of cool. How he was like a ghost and um, was like this ghost pirate that was cursed and um, how he's Ivy's father and Soul Edge is like entangled in their family. It was just a really cool uh, backstory for a cool character. And uh, he also hints at my number one choice. Um, so those of you who already know me will probably already get that off the bat. But let's get into my next one. Number seven would be Killick. Uh, Killick is another old time favorite of mine. Like I really liked his range with the bow staff. He had a lot of cool uh, multiple hit. Um, Techniques like when he would hit you down on the floor with his staff or the my favorite of all time being his roundabout I call it where he swings the staff overhead and Sweeps you and then comes down with a hit and then you can barrage that into like the mid chops and then the low chops And he just has a lot of good combos that go into each other and he makes for a really fun character to use I haven't used him as of much as recently as I used to all the time but uh, my mains have kind of shifted from back then, um, my mains always used to be pretty much uh, Taki, Killick, and Cervantes, and that has since changed. I still use them a lot, exceptionally even, but um, the people that I use mostly has changed, and we'll get to those characters when we get to them. But So Killick was number seven. Number six is Huang. Um, Huang has always been an intrigue of mine and one of my favorite characters to use. 
uh, it was a little weird to me that, I mean, given this time period, I guess, but he was probably a warrior during the Joseon dynasty uh, based on his outfit that he wears from, from Korea. And the only thing that always got me is I don't know why he uses a Chinese short sword. Like, he should have used a, a traditional Korean weapon. Um, there are plenty of them. But I do like the character as a whole. I like his backstory. I like how he interacts with some of the other casts like Yun Sung and Sung Mina, but um, he's just a cool character overall. I always liked his outfit, um, and his gameplay is a little bit different than the others, so I like his roundabout moves. It's He has like a mixture, I would like to say, of like Shanghua and like maybe uh, a little bit of Sofitia thrown in there, just the way that like he jabs and counters, but his uh, his overall circular movements are more aligned with like Shanghua, um, which is how you would obviously wield a traditional Chinese sword. Again, I don't know why he uses that weapon, but um, I for take it for what it is, he's still a cool character. And next we have Yang Song, which is kind of his alternate or his clone. Um, a lot of people like Yang Song better than Huang. I'm like kind of iffy on that. I like, I can interchangeably take either one of them, uh, to be honest. Like I like both of them pretty much equally. Uh, I would like to see them both come back in a game and Yang Song get like his own variation of a weapon like for example give one of them a traditional chinese blade um and then give the other one a traditional korean weapon so i wouldn't i would not mind like having both of them in the game i don't think we're going to get both of them in six but if we do get one of them i'm hoping it's wong so i guess i'm rooting for him a bit more but young sung is another one of my top favorites and after that, we have another Korean character. For number four, we have Song Mina. Song Mina staff is um, preferable to Killick for me because of the blade at the end of it. Um, she does a lot more <clears throat> aerial things like jumping and swinging slides and like standing on top of it, and a lot more sweeps and a lot. She just she's more of a mid tier character as opposed to an up close character, which is what Killick tends to be into. Um, just the way he holds the staff, even she holds it lower and he holds it more upward on the bow itself but I really like the way that she uses the staff and I like her movements um, and I like her backstory as well uh, her character design is really cool I love the aesthetic overall again it's a little strange to me that um, with the Korean characters they went a little bit more fantasy as opposed to traditional but everyone else they stuck with like traditional costumes and weapons and stuff like that uh, I'm not sure if it was a lack of information back when the game was first developed and they stuck with it for aesthetic reasons or if uh, they just wanted to go with a more fantasy-esque thing for them. But um, with that all being said, Sung Mina is definitely top tier for me and she's on my list as number four. Number three is Mitsurugi, which is my new main. I've been maining Mitsurugi since, I want to say, um, Soul Calibur 4. Um, I just like the new way that his moveset is. Um, he's got a lot of combos that feed into each other. Um, I did put him down for a bit with Soul Calibur 6 because his one of his basic combos like leads directly into the, the reversal edge. And for those of you who are friends on my channel, like you know that I'm not really a big fan of reversal edge. I'm fine with you being able to hit R1 to initiate it, but the fact they interlaced it within some combos was ridiculous. And they did change that for a bunch of characters, him being one of them, so I have gotten more back into using him again. But I just don't like the fact that I was incorporated in the first place and it kind of made me unmain him for a while, um, in which I had actually gone back to switching between Grow and uh, Taki, but um, I actually enjoy Taki more in Soul Calibur 3 as well. But that's not here nor there. So Mitsurugi is my number three, which leads into my number two, which is Taki. So. Taki, from an aesthetic standpoint, I've always been a fan of Shinobi. I've always loved like um, like ninjutsu and the characters that utilize such things. And she used to use it a lot more. She does do like the downward blast, which is I'm guessing a bomb of some kind. But in Soul Calibur 3, she utilized a lot more. In fact, if you created a character and you used her weapons and um, her kunai in Soul Calibur 3. The character could actually throw fireballs and uh, did a lot more ninja-esque things like teleportation and like um, a lot of like fast travel movements and stuff. Uh, she sticks with her pretty much traditional 8-way-run style that she's had since the beginning. Um, 
which is something that I look forward to using because she is a close range character and she can get far away in mid tier with those teleportations and those kicks and stuff. So I really do like using her, especially when you're trying to uh, ground juggle or try and extend a combo. She's very useful. Her costume's always been really cool. Um, just the way the character is designed um, is, I don't know, I just like her a lot. So she is always my number two. And now we went back to Cervantes to feed into my number one because my number one is actually a bonus character. My favorite character of all time in Soul Calibur is from Soul Calibur 4, which is funny because Soul Calibur 4 is my least favorite of the series. But um, Shura, the bonus character, which is the double katana wielding uh, Bushido warrior, she actually... Um, is my favorite character just from aesthetic standpoint alone her her character design is awesome I love the fact that she dual wields two katanas uh, in Soul Calibur 4 um, That was my favorite style to use because you got Cervantes, but you got two katanas, which I Don't know blew my mind at the time. I really wish she would come back or at least her style could come back as a bonus uh, fighting style in the game Anything like that would help me. I really like Shura a lot and um I may try and recreate her again, but I don't know what kind of style I would give her. Probably Cervantes, but I don't want to give her his weapons. I want to give her, like, her own katana. But that's going to be the video for today, guys. Let me know in your comment section down below if you agree with this list or show me your list of your own. Uh, I'd like to see at least your top five, if not your top ten, in the comment section down below. And I um, hope maybe if I get enough of responses to this video, I'll make a, a follow-up where I include your responses. The last couple times I've tried to do that. I haven't gotten as many responses as I usually do, so if we can get more comments down below, then that would um, it would really help me create like future content involving you guys in the future, which I really want to do. So with that being said, we're going to bring this video to a close. Make sure you check out my description box for links and people to follow and stuff like that. And as always, guys, peace.